Good afternoon. My name is uh, Steve Halberts. I'm uh, CEO of uh, TPA Global. I'm very um, uh, glad you could join us this afternoon on a, on a theme getting towards an end-to-end -end technology solution on VAT for Europe. And I'm very proud to uh, uh, to announce that we have Anita of uh, Anita Richter of uh, uh, Eclair with us today. She's going to tell you all about uh, end-to-end. Uh, VAT solutions for, for e-platforms uh, around Europe. And we also have Keval of Signet. Uh, Keval is a regular speaker on our uh, uh, building blocks for tax webinar series. And he will be um, um, also talking about uh, their VAT, end-to-end VAT solution. Uh, Signet is, uh, it has launched into the marketplace. We will also connect the ties with um, the tool you've seen before if you were participating to this event uh, before and that's the universal mobile compliance tracker which can be used to track also your VAT compliance needs and, and progress and status update. So with that I would like to go to the first slide. So we will talk a little bit about uh, the, the building blocks for tax and how uh, a tax compliant car wash where you start with dirty data you want to get to clean data to be pushed through the digital mailbox of the tax authorities how that looks like we will invite anita to give her uh, uh, demo on on the eclear functionality uh, which is quite amazing then um, keval will step in on their r7 tool um, and and together with uh, the compliance tracker we will end uh, the, the presentation today. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, um, uh, use the chat functionality and uh, Rosanna, who's uh, on behalf of TPA Global uh, tracking it, will bring uh, the questions to our attention or otherwise we will pick them up ourselves. Um, let's go to the next slide. Next slide, please. So what 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 are we looking at? We're looking at uh, a new way of uh, of dealing with uh, data uh, management and data architecture for tax purposes. So rather uh, uh, rather you pick up the dirty data from your financial systems and you clean it and you use it only for VAT purposes. We also believe there's more and more a need for a holistic approach where you're not only picking up the dirty data you need for your VAT return, but also for other indirect as well as direct uh, tax reporting uh, approaches. Uh, for that, a few parties in the market are building uh, what we call middleware. We like to call it a car wash. So you start with a dirty car in front of a car wash and it cleans with various applications your data to get to clean data. Why do you need to clean data? Well, that's to um, comply with uh, the data set that the tax authorities are expecting um, through the digital mailbox. Uh, more and more tax authorities are, are moving in this direction. Um, we will, uh, one of the next events, I think it's the, the one two weeks from now, we will also um, uh, present uh, together with uh, Visor Software they're a software company which helps the tax authorities on the other side of the mailbox. So it's always handy, you know, what they're expecting on the other side to do exactly the things you need to do in front of the digital mailbox to be uh, tax compliant. Um, the, the car wash approach is uh, very much uh, a, a next generation uh, approach to tax and technology where obviously more people than uh, than just yourself will be using the car, the different car wash facilities uh, to get dirty data converted to uh, clean data, clean data to to get converted to XML, and XML uh, run through the digital mailbox with the tax authorities. Um, so we're really looking at the next generation where more affordable, um, more com uh, commoditized solutions will, will uh, rule the waves rather than a fully um, customized uh, dashboard, which a lot of uh, companies are still looking at today. Okay, with that, uh, let's move to the next slide. 
So how does a car wash like that look like? So first step, we like to structure the data. This is not uh, different for, for SAFT, for VAT, for uh, corporate income tax, for country by country reporting, which some uh, VAT people are heavily involved in as well, for transfer pricing. So there's a variety of uh, data points you would like to get in a structured uh, data architecture, and you also like to manage them from a holistic perspective. Um, the, the, uh, the data, once cleaned, will be pushed into forms. And the forms, uh, in, in, in the sense of uh, corporate income tax returns, fat returns, will uh, again be converted to an XML version, uh, which will be uh, mapped against the country-specific XML conversion and registration requirements in the local country. Uh, once you get it through the mailbox, once you get the digital confirmation by the tax authorities, it means you're full, full compliance with uh, filing that data package. That's how the, the, the tax compliant car wars uh, works. And uh, obviously what we believe there's a lot of integration happening between in-house tax teams, finance and IT teams uh, to build uh, a part of this car wash in-house and use part of the car wash facilities from uh, from external vendors. Uh, it's it's really a collaboration where the whole philosophy um, TPA Global stands for is uh, you, you need to inspire the people, you need to determine and fix your processes in a professional manner before you even start addressing the technology supporting it and, and facilitating it. Okay, with that, let's move to the next slide. So this is a um, another way of looking at the same picture, but now I'm I'm looking at the blue colored boxes where from your EOP, your HR, and other sources, you get the dirty data. Data you clean it, you put it in forms and, and XML, convert it uh, through the digital mailbox. We typically refer to that as your single source of data. So this is where you really are tracking and following the data flow uh, from its origin to its destiny. Um, the, the yellow uh, shaded areas are uh, what, what I would call different tools with which you work to track the data. For example, your Power BI, this is just as an illustration because there's a, a variety of, of these dashboarding and tracking tools uh, in the market, but if you use uh, Power BI to, to keep status inside, so know where what package of data is in the in the flow. So here you see the arrows from the Power BI to the uh, blue shaded uh, single source of data flow, and and uh, this is to track the status inside. So how far are you with each of these data packages? That's typically uh, what uh, it says local tax compliance, but it, it should read lead tax compliance audit committees and C-suites are interested in. So that they want a status insight uh, on where you stand with your data packages. If we look uh, on, the, on the top, it says CT as, as compliance tracker, the, the tool we will be addressing uh, uh, at the end of this uh, presentation. The compliance tracker uh, really looks at your um, your reporting, uh, one reporting package or one fat return at a time. It allocates the, uh, the, the RACI to, of that fat return to the various people involved, but it also tracks capacity planning. It, it, it makes sure the fat return is on time and is measured against a production calendar, which has internal as well as external deadlines. So here we get to what we call an actionable insight where local finance, local tax compliance people uh, want to work with this compliance tracker. The, the version we, we have been using here is a, a universal mobile compliance tracker, which gives you actionable insight. And even if uh, people um, um, are, are out of uh, capacity, you can shift uh, some of the production to other people who are less occupied at that 
various dates with three clicks on, on, the, on your mobile. It all, uh, in this regard, it all talks to Office 365, a work spot environment everyone's familiar with. So what you see here is uh, the single source of information needs to be tied to the single source of data. That's a, a very universal insight. So I'm pro probably an open door to a lot of uh, people on, uh, on the online, but just to give you an, uh, a first set of uh, how these two work together, but also how different modules in the yellow uh, shaded areas do give you more and more functionality to track data, to work with the data, to do the things, uh, to get the dirty data from point of origin to into the digital mailbox. Okay, the, this has been a uh, short introduction from my end. If there's any questions, please go ahead and uh, type them into the uh, chat functionality and uh, Rosanna or the others will alert us uh, if they come up. If we move to the next slide, um, we have a few poll questions and uh, maybe um, Anita, you want to um, um, start sharing these poll questions with the audience. So this is sort of the uh, introduction to the eClear presentation. Um, by raising a few questions, we involve you as an audience and get some interesting uh, feedback. Uh, at least that's what we've seen with other poll questions we raised in uh, earlier events. Anita, can I give you the floor? Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, so before I start introducing eClear and its solutions, um, which are focusing on the e-commerce market within and into uh, Europe um, on a B2C um, uh, basis. I would like to understand and ask the audience um, uh, some questions, two questions actually, um, two short questions with regard to the e-commerce package that are coming into force uh, 1st of July 2021 um, for the European Union. I, I would like to know um, whether, how are you prepared? Yeah. Uh, for for the e-commerce package that comes into force um, to to yeah to get an understanding how uh, of your views uh, on that on that part um, if you if you are an ad, uh, advisor in that area you can also have a look at your uh, customers that you normally uh, advise how they are prepared for that package. Anita, are you okay. able to see the polls? I, I do. Thank you, oh. Susanna. I do. I do. Um, so, 32% uh, say we are currentizing, currently analyzing um, the impact. That's quite interesting. 42% uh, say it's not relevant. Not sure why it is not relevant. Maybe because of a, a tax advisors joining us uh, today or um, because it's not relevant due to the fact that the products are, are not uh, covered. But I'm very much interested indeed in the, in the uh, second uh, answer that people are currently analyzing. And that's why it's also interesting to hear what um, eClear can uh, provide with its solution in that area. Can we go to the next poll, please, Rosanna? Um, for all of you who answered it's relevant or you analyze that currently, um, I would be interested to hear uh, what what source do you use actually in order um, to apply or what gener what source will you use in order to apply the correct VAT rate going forward in the European Union uh, countries. So, do you use a tax engine that automatically uh, keeps track on the applicable VAT rates? Do you use information from external consultants? The official database from the European Commission? Or do you generally apply the highest VAT rate? That's, that is really interesting. Thank you. So um, as I can see, uh, roughly 50% of you uh, rely on 
uh, data that they receive from from external uh, consultants or do by by internal research source and uh, even 70% say that they use the official uh, database published by the European Commission. Um, and 22% say they use a tax engine, um, which keeps the VAT rates up to date. Um, thank that you, that's a, a very, yeah. Is that a surprise to you, Anita, this, these percentages? So the the 50% uh, does not surprise me um, because that's also, uh, my experience that um, many companies um, make use of, of external uh, consultants or even do internal research, search, which, um, which appears uh, quite difficult and very time consuming also going forward um, to keep track of all the relevant um, text information um, in, within Europe, also outside Europe, uh, that's, that's proving difficult. So you're basically saying the manual process, which uh, had the information provided by external consultants or an internal database where you uh, make sure the, the VAT rate applied by finance is the correct uh, VAT uh, rate. Uh, basically, you're saying that's a two manual process still in the upcoming change uh, for, for platforms and, um, and the VAT treatment around platforms. Now, for merchants in general, um, for companies in general, it, it will be difficult and it already is difficult to really keep track on all uh, VAT changes um, throughout uh, the European Union countries and all 27 European Union countries. That is indeed proving diffi difficult uh, because it's not only a manual process where you have to really have to spend a lot of time uh, in order to get the right information. It is also um, you're you're often uh, late in the game, yeah. Because you, as soon as you get the information, you need to verify that you need to put that into your systems, and often uh, uh, you will be late, yeah, with that change. Um, and I think that brings me that perfectly brings me to my to my presentation. Um, Hosanna, if you allow me to present, yeah, thank you. So. Um, allow me to to start. Rosanna, can you confirm you see my screen? I can see your screen now. Anita. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Allow me to introduce um, to introduce Eclear uh, first. So Eclear is a text technology uh, um, firm founded some years ago, five years ago in Germany. We provide uh, end to end text technology technology solutions. We are focusing on, um, on the e-commerce market, um, on e-commerce sales, e-commerce transactions within the European Union and into the European Union. Um, the text technology solution that eClear provides concentrate and focus on end-to-end -end, uh, text solution. Why is end-to-end -end so crucial? Um, now, yeah, I believe, we believe that in 10 years ahead, the VAT return, as we know today, will no longer exist. Yeah, so also what, what you mentioned at the very beginning, Steve, is what, what we see as well, um, is the fact that uh, also um, governance and jurisdictions are focusing on automating um, the VAT process end to end by using a different kind of technologies. And that is also what eClear is um, focusing on. So as I just mentioned, we are, we are focusing on the e-commerce um, business. Um, very precise, to be precise, we are focusing on um, business to consumer con uh, transactions cross-border within the European Union. When I, what I just mentioned with regard to, v, to the VAT uh, automation and the, the steps towards um, the, the automation also uh, envisaged by, by the government. Um, one step we already see and which is, is, is coming soon um, is the European Union uh, VAT package on e-commerce um, sales. So uh, that package package comes into force 1st of July, 2021. 
so not much much time uh, left and the audience just mentioned that many of them are still analyzing what needs to be done uh, for this e-commerce package um, and it's not only the fact that um, there will be a one-stop shop uh, vet return that allows you to file or the B2C uh, transaction, cross-border transaction within the European Union in one single return. It is much more than that, actually. The distance sales threshold, how they apply today, they will be abolished. They will no longer apply um, the country-specific distance sales threshold regime. Instead, there will be a 10,000 euro a European-wide uh, distance sale, which is to be honest, for, for many merchants, for many companies, uh, it's, it's reached quite, quite fast. And the, the, the topic is not, not about the filing itself. The topic is more about how can you ensure that you always apply the right VAT rate um, for your products in the country of destination. And uh, in my view, that's the most important topic when it comes to the e-commerce um, package. Other, uh, other steps towards the end-to-end -end automation are the European Union customs reforms, where the, um, the low-value goods threshold is abolished, um, and every single product needs to go to the customs. Brexit is causing a lot of he headaches to, to different um, to companies, to merchants all over the globe when it comes to e-commerce business. The B2B quick fixes, which already came into force 1st of uh, January 2020, uh, also a very important aspect in my view, um, where the governments uh, try to reduce the VAT fraud uh, on a global cross-border, uh, on, on a European cross-border uh, business transactions. Or where the seller has to um, has to ensure that they check the VAT identification number of their B2B customers before a transaction takes place, and they don't don't only uh, have to check the VAT ID number, they also have to make sure that the check uh, is recorded, and that they store the record uh, in an order-proof manner. And last but not least, in my view, a really important uh, topic is the European Union marketplace liability that also comes into effect 1st of July 2021. Uh, that will, does not only relate to marketplace it, places, but um, to uh, electronic interfaces uh, in a whole. So many shop systems, yeah, shop, uh, shop systems, marketplaces are, um, yeah, are, uh, become liable for the VAT, um, for the VAT that is due for transactions um, uh, handled by the merchants acting on the, on the marketplace. So considering all of that, we are as eClear and as uh, many, many other uh, businesses are well aware of the enormous string of compliance requirements that merchants, sellers, businesses have to face in order to determine, to calculate, file and pay the respective VAT. And for the e-commerce business, for the B2C uh, cross-border e-commerce business, it's even more important to also not, not to forget uh, the VAT reclaim part. And the VAT reclaim is, is a pain point yeah, in the e-commerce business. So as soon as you have to file or have to reclaim VAT from foreign tax authorities, this is where, where the struggle starts. Yeah, because uh, some of you may know it's not that easy to reclaim VAT uh, from foreign tax authorities. So how can we help here? What can we do um, to facilitate um, this, this string of compliance? In our view, um, one thing, and that's also something that, that uh, showed um, the, the, the poll at the very beginning, one thing is, is really key in the whole, in the whole um, uh, process. Connectivity is key. So we definitely want to avoid any manual process uh, and whatever you, 
you do in your uh, in your business. So uh, we have pre-built uh, RPs and plugins, which are which can be um, used uh, in in multiple ways. Yeah. So we are connected to merchants, ERP, and shop systems. Why is that important? It is important because we are able to provide via the connectivity to the shop and to the ERP system, we are able to provide text content uh, to the shop system and um, the ERP system of a company or a merchant. Um, our product VAT rules, VAT rules, is a, um, is a cloud-based tax engine that includes all kinds of tax content. So a thousand of tax rules for 30 different jurisdictions in numerous languages are uh, included in the eClear tax engine. And that is unique. Yeah, so uh, especially when you compare uh, the, the European Commission database, which is um, not even kept up to date. And um, some of you may already have recognized the big disclaimer that is mentioned on before you enter something on the, uh, on the database from the European Commission, there's a big, big, database, uh, big disclaimer saying that um, companies uh, are still liable for any uh, any wrong information or data that is uh, used from that uh, European Commission database. The eClear tax engine uh, includes all relevant correct VAT uh, tax data um, for all 30 jurisdictions throughout Europe. It includes all exceptions, more than 50,000 exceptions. It, it includes uh, exemptions, regional rules, all it covers it all, yeah. So it includes everything, every rule uh, uh, from every single European Union country. That leads to um, more than 800,000 eClear codes. What is an eClear code? So what we've done in the last five years is that we created a, we call it the new European standard. Um, Many, many companies, many logistic firms normally work with a six digit um, customs harm code, which is not even uh, sufficient when you have to file an interest that declaration because there you already require an eight digits codes. What we've done is that we uh, harmonized the whole tax content of all European countries uh, into a 10 digits European VAT code. And um, we even added four more digits to that European Union VAT code, uh, and we call it the eClear tax codes, the eClear ID. And the last four digits is actually where, let's say, the magic happens, because here you uh, can find all the exceptions, all the regular rules and exemptions in all European Union countries. How to bring that together? What eClear uh, does with its solution VAT rules is that we, um, we do an automatic assignment of merchants inventory to our um, eClear taxonomy rules. So each and every single product that a merchant has in its inventory is um, mapped to a unique specific eClear ID in our tax engine. That ensures once it is mapped and assigned, it is automatically kept up to date with regard to all tax rate changes throughout Europe. And these updates are certified. So our solution um, is certified it's a certified solution, it's a controlled solution. What is happening uh, here is that the, 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 the tax rates, the applicable tax rates, are not only uh, um, 
used in the background of your ERP system. Instead, it has a, a display functionality that allows you to display already the right VAT rate um, in, your, in your checkout of your webshop. Uh, so that means mm, whatever tax rate is applicable, wherever the destination country is of your B2C transaction, the right VAT rate is applied uh, in, your, in the checkout and on the invoice that you send to your customer. The importance of, uh, of, of uh, the VET ID number check, I just mentioned at the very beginning, um, we cannot only support B2C transaction. Also here, uh, we are able to automatically validate VET ID numbers of your, uh, of your customer in case of B2B transaction. Uh, we are connected uh, with the Federal Tax Office in Germany and in Austria, and as well uh, to the FIS database from the European Commission. And we have a solution called CheckVAT ID that allows you to automate um, the validation of a VET ID number, and we also store that check uh, or in an audit safe manner. Besides the fact that via our connectivity, we are able to uh, put the right data, the right, right bed rates for your inventory into your ERP and shop system. We are, um, with our VET switch solution, are also able to extract the data and validate them um, from, from your ERP uh, and shop system into our tax engine. What happens with that data that is extracted and validated? That is used in order to um, automatically end-to-end -end, uh, file the VAT returns that are required for a merchant for B2B, B2C transactions to file these um, automatically via our VAT, um, via our VAT speed uh, solution. What is important to mention here is that um, the tax liability uh, for these kind of, of um, filings is of course still with the merchants. So the merchant needs to ensure that they um, file their, their, um, their VET returns on time and that they make the, the VAT payments um, to the respective tax authorities uh, on time. And th the merchant is still also has, uh, has to handle the, the VAT risk in the different European Union uh, uh, jurisdictions, because that is something that, all, that cannot be avoided, also not with the changes that come into force 1st of July. Um, the audit risk, the tax risk is still with the merchant. And that is the reason why eClear actually goes the next step. Um, with our clearing uh, solution, ClearVAT, which is the, the, the third solution, which I like, would like to present here. Um, our ClearVAT solution is the only end-to-end -end, um, clearing solution um, where we do not only handle the right tax determination and tax filing, but we also handle the tax payment for our merchant which means that we enable merchants uh, selling a B2C cross-border in a VAT-free manner. So how does that work? We make, we transform um, B2C transactions, taxable B2C uh, transactions into tax-exempt B2B transactions. And we do, that, we do that throughout the whole European Union countries. Let, let me give you an example to explain that in more detail. Um, what we do, we are part of, um, of the checkout of, uh, our, of the ERP, uh, of, the, of the shop system of the merchant. So although the merchant is still 
uh, responsible to deliver their products to the to the customer. Clearvat um, is or eClear is responsible to issue an invoice to the end consumer to collect the money from the end consumer and to settle the payment with the local tax authorities. The remaining amount is then uh, settled uh, with the merchants, deducting a commission fee um, that is um, held back by, by eClear. That allows our merchant to, um, or there's no need for, for the merchant to um, consider any uh, foreign tax liabilities in their, in their books um, for a European or cross-border European um, B2C uh, transactions. No, they have no longer to struggle with uh, external or foreign uh, VAT audits. And, and that is a very important aspect, they can ensure that they no longer need to think about how VAT reclaims from foreign tax authorities can be handled. Because eClear makes sure that they are instantly pre-financed. So overall, that really unique ClearVAT solution um, ensures that the tax liability and the audit risk for merchants is reduced to zero in all European Union countries for all cross-border uh, B2C transactions. So overall, um, we provide solutions based on, uh, on the needs of, of merchants. Uh, first of all, uh, the VET rules itself uh, with the uh, permanently updated uh, VET engine and the extensive uh, uh, VET content. We provide a, a filing hub uh, solutions for, for merchants selling throughout Europe and our full service product, our clearing solution, ClearVAT, which is based um, on a acquiring license um, issued by, the, by BaFin. Um, we can provide even a full service solution to uh, allow cross-border business VAT free. As I mentioned, our solution is uh, SAP certified. We are supported with our solutions by Deloitte and BDO provided um, a certification based on a, on a 880 standard from the Institute of Public Auditors in Germany. Summarizing what you, what you just heard, um, these are our solution, the VAT rules, the VAT suite, and our ClearVAT solution, our full service to solution, um, where we reduce the VAT um, within Europe to zero. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is very interesting. Uh, a question I have, how does the system recognize the SKUs? Is that something you need to add it as a picture, like the shoe you are showing? Is that recognized by the picture or do you need to enter SKU codes uh, in, in a predefined manner? Yes. So um, what, what, is, what is required at the very beginning of the process is that one-time assignment. So that means um, we need data uh, from, the, we need the inventory data that is loaded into our system to ensure that we, um, we can assign uh, the, the product to our um, tax taxonomy, to our eClear uh, taxonomy. And once that is assigned, um, we, we can ensure that the, the update is automatically uh, considered. But that pre-assignment, that one-time assignment uh, is required. We already have millions of, of products which are already in our um, system, which are already pre-assigned, which makes it easier um, for our merchants uh, to do that one-time one assignment. Very good, thank you. Um, Shall we move to the uh, next series of polls? Yes, please. 
Yes, although I did receive two questions, shall we address that now or after the polls? Uh, um, let's do the polls first and then uh, address the questions right after. Yeah, that's fine. Anita, you want to? I yeah. can't see the polls yet, unfortunately. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, does my yeah. company group generate revenue with B2C cross border sales within or into Europe? Um, and then the question to the audience is uh, that's true, but it's mainly physical goods or it's mainly services or it's a combination, or there's no B2C cross border business uh, for my um, enterprise. So very factual, I think, uh, to the audience. Yeah, indeed. I would really. I'm. I'm. I'm interested to hear. Um, uh, yeah, if they, if, if our audience has has to deal with these kind of transactions. Well, an important feature. Well, let's first address this. Okay. So. Uh, some some of our uh, some some people of the audience say they they mainly handle uh, services. That's quite interesting uh, because also for the B two C uh, area, um, the, the the services uh, where you have to also the, the the goods of the place of destination where the customer is located that you have to to uh, to deal with the right VAT rate. That's quite interesting. We do not cover that yet with our engine. It's quite interesting to see. Um, and 32% uh, indeed um, have to handle goods and services. Uh, so both uh, both is relevant um, for them. Yeah, I think uh, an observation is that more and more uh, industries move to platform economy uh, of some sort, even uh, big uh, companies. Uh, not only use their own channel uh, of selling their goods uh, through retail, but uh, certainly also step into platform platforms like Shopify and and uh, the likes uh, of the Zalandos of this world to uh, sell their uh, their products. So I think the eclair solution becomes more and more relevant. Yeah. Anita, a few words on this one. Yeah, that actually goes in the in the direction of the of the next question, and I fully agree to what you just said. Um, I would like to understand the channels um, our audience uses uh, in order to sell their products and services. Now, is that own websites? Do they use marketplaces like Amazon or eBay? Do they make use of local resellers? That's also uh, a possibility, or is it a combination? Uh, of the first three, or is it not applicable? And I fully agree to what you just said, Steve, because the the e-commerce market uh, market is a growing uh, market. Yeah, that's also something that we observe um, that this this area is heavily growing. Um, yeah, I think uh, if we see the 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 stock market, uh, most tech giants who are involved in some sort of platform economy, uh, marketplace type of business uh, like the Amazons uh, do do very well in the stock market uh, for that reason. Yeah. Okay, let's look at the results. That's interesting. Um, that. Uh, that it is it's 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 clear that um that yeah companies try to 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 sell their products um throughout different channels yeah not only only one uh, channel the own website or marketplaces but they that they also make use of the combination of all of them to really uh, make the best use of all uh, available channels There's still a, a fraction of uh, companies doing using only their own website, so that's an interesting market. If you add that to the 
parties who already do use the platforms and the percentage gets uh, above uh, 50 percent okay yeah, and i'm i'm thinking that will increase uh during the next couple of years because ex especially the direct to consumer business via own own websites is in a quite a attractive field um, for companies and for merchants exactly exactly um i'm i'm conscious of time anita I, I, are you okay to uh do, do you want to say a few words or shall we move that to the end of the conversation i think maybe we should um uh move this poll to uh or do do a quick one on this one and then move to um uh, uh, to kval Give yeah, them, absolutely uh, fine for me. Time. So I, I would. Uh, this is just to, to, to close the circle somehow to understand whether uh, the audience think that the compliance burden will significantly reduce um, their, their compliance burden. Uh, and 50% do not know yet. 38% um, think uh, yes, it will. That's, um, that's quite a lot. Uh, and 50% uh, say, I don't know yet. It's also quite interesting uh, because at the very beginning, the audience also said they are still investigating what this e-commerce package means for them. I think so. Uh, this, this is a moving target, but it's moving uh, almost at the speed of light. As you said, Anita, July 1 is uh, just a few days away and uh, figure of speech. So, okay, thanks, uh, Anita. Let's uh, move. Uh, on, on to the next topic, uh, Keval, do you want to uh, address the R7 tool, where the R7 tool is obviously uh, beyond uh, the, the, the EU reach, but also has some other features uh, we would like to share with you. Keval, floor yes, is yours. Stephen. Yeah. Yes, Stephen, thanks for the overview so far. Uh, I'll take it on from here. I think we can go on to the next slide and just pause here for a second. Um, I'll start with uh, echoing one statement that Anita said is that in the next few years, I think the VAT return as we know it, it's going to change completely. Uh, there's going to be a lot more involvement and we've seen this at a global level. There's going to be a lot more involvement into uh, having direct connections to the kind of data that makes up VAT transactions and number of countries in EU and outside the EU have started requiring this transaction level reporting or this detailed level data reporting or audit files um, and such requirements and that again brings in a brings in a need to rethink the entire vat process and the tax data process as a whole um, so just to introduce the r7 tool very quickly um, similar to what uh, anita and the team at eclear do on the b2c side for um, you know for for companies that do digital selling uh, we are primarily focused on B2B uh, transactions. We normally work with companies that have uh, are either into manufacturing or trading or into the banking and finance sector who do a, a lot, large number of B2B transactions, uh, you know, both within European countries and between European countries uh, and help them prepare, uh, help them prepare VAT returns with the data that they have. Uh, again, our tool works in a very similar way to what uh, eClear had described. In that we have these connectors shown here on the on the left that can be integrated with any different data sources so which could be your erps they could be your uh, pos systems they could be uh, a crm system used for invoicing we have apis we have automation connectors that can pick up data from there bring it into what we call the vat warehouse and uh, take it from there into a data validation validation engine uh, all of which are available as separate blocks uh, going on the car wash model that we're looking at to show the sort of applications that can be done, uh, what we've shown over here in the diagram on the right is the transfer pricing tool TP Genie. Just to illustrate the fact that the same data that we get for VAT return preparation purpose can be used for any other data processing purpose as well. And with the increasing compliance burden that's coming in on co uh, coming in on uh, companies operating within Europe today, um, it's very important to have a tax data strategy in place. And that's what we aim to help companies do with the entire R7 VAT ecosystem, more than just the tool as we call it. Uh, so we help companies extract their data. We help companies store their data in a warehouse and help companies prepare, uh, you know, check and maintain data quality using the validation engine, which can then be used for, of course, VAT reporting, 
but also for any other form of reporting such as transfer pricing which is there in interest of time we'll go on to the next slide straight away So quick overview of what we do in R7 VAT specifically for VAT reporting. Uh, as I said, going from top to bottom, we have data processing for retrieval from any, any ERP systems, uh, any other systems that hold tax data. There's remodeling and, and validation of data available, all you know, at a data quality level, at a technical level, but also as a, as a VAT rules level to check that, you know, for example, the correct VAT data is applied or not, the correct sort of reporting is in place or not. Data reconciliations to check between things like the VAT ledger and the GL data, things between the VAT ledger and the sales ledger data, all those kind of multiple reconciliations. And then, of course, we have a full return preparation engine, uh, which will soon be ready for all, all of the EU countries, uh, which can be configured as per the tax code which are inputted and, uh, pre and created into the return format for each specific country. And going also forward from there, uh, for whichever country, such as the UK, for example, that provide direct uh, API-based submission, uh, we also have those capabilities in place. So either the, uh, clients can get the data in form of an XML return uh, and get those uh, get the VAT returns prepared, or they can uh, submit it directly to the authorities if the APIs are uh, available, so that the entire end-to-end -end automation um, automation is in place. Again, in interest of time, while we have the demo ready, I think given that there's about six, seven minutes left, we'll go directly into the compliance tracker and then take up uh, you know, demos if any specific questions come up on those. So as we discussed, you know, there's a number of different compliances that companies have to work on today, uh, both on the B2C reporting, both on the VAT reporting, indirect taxes, uh, customs reporting if there's sales between different EU countries or globally. And of course, there's then the entire universe on the direct tax side as well. Uh, and of course, expanding from there into other places such as payroll reporting and such. And it's a it's a challenge to keep track of all these compliances. Uh, most tax heads, CFOs, global head of tax, uh, we can see that with the increasing compliances, they, have, uh, they, they can t spend a lot of time tracking and managing these compliances. Uh, which is where the compliance tracker fits in. So compliance tracker is primarily a mobile application that holds all the compliance deadline that an organization needs to follow, holds a status uh, that, that could be, you know, whether not started in progress or complete uh, for each of these tax deadlines. And then also an assignment of who is responsible, who is accountable, who needs to be consulted. Uh, so the entire RACI cycle for, uh, for each of these compliances that an organization has to work with. The way the compliance tracker is designed is again with the API and connectivity model in place, so that it can uh, it can be connected with other tools such as R7 VAT or eClear to pick up the compliance status directly. So there's no need for manual updates as well once the correct configuration is done, uh, and all of the status updates from every different tool is uh, consolidated into a single uh, in, into a single application uh, that can be the master source uh, for a global head of tax or for a CFO to view the entire tax process. Uh, Steve, any points that you would like to add on on the compliance tracker apart from this? No, I, I think uh, the the beauty of, uh, the, for example, the VAT rules, uh, Anita talked about uh, KVAL and uh, the R7 picking up uh, the, the dirty data, uh, the compliance tracker managing capacity and the actionable insight. I think it all brings uh, uh, the, the Lego for tax or building blocks for tax um, uh, reality closer by to a lot of uh, people. So we really believe in collaboration between these tools uh, to optimize your own in-house tax workflows. So go ahead. Sure, we'll go on to the next slide. So as I was describing again, we've shown a little more in detail on what this looks like. So as the screen on the right shows, there are different country regions that can be set up within the tool. Uh, and there's a there's a dashboard that gives a status between total number of documents that are being tracked, how many on which no action has been taken, how many have been started or haven't been started, number that are in progress, and the number that are deadlines being updated. Uh, and of course, it's in the form of a mobile app because that's where the world is moving towards nowadays. Uh, you know, away from desktop-based or web-based applications to uh, mobile applications. Uh, which can be a lot more accessible, updated a lot quickly, and a lot easier to use, uh, you know, across the entire organization. 
go on to the next slide. Are we getting a, a, a poll question now, uh, Kev? I'm not sure if it if it has been configured. Uh, we can go on to the next point quickly. I think given there are three minutes left, and leave it open for one or two quick questions. Uh, or if people are interested in seeing in any of the demos, we can go through it quickly. So I think uh, yeah, I think some some key takeaways that uh, maybe I can start with, and Steve and Anita can add on. Uh, you know, it's very important to have uh, have a single source of data uh, and and link it with a single source of information, as we had shown, for example, in the R7 VAT piece, uh, where all the data pipelines need to just be built once, held in a central warehouse, and then used for every separate reporting process which is there, without re without repeating any data transmission processes. Um, and of course, on the VAT side, we are able to manage the entire VAT process from data extraction to tax. Uh, tax authority reporting uh, and of course using the compliance tracker we give control of each step of the procedure any additional points uh, that you want to add on steve and anita um i, I think maybe uh, the the two questions uh Ruzana, can you share the questions because i i believe that they might be also relating to anita her presentation or kival's presentation can you uh, yeah it was mostly i think for uh, anita's uh, previous poll questions before her presentation it's from Bastogoni. First one he said was, the problem with the new e-commerce rules is that the tax authorities are not ready and or do not know how to deal with them yet. That's the case in the Netherlands. So is that a question from Boss uh, or uh, just a statement? I think it's a statement by Boss uh, saying uh, the tax authorities are simply also not ready for that, that implementation uh, modus. Or is there a question attached to it? No, but even in the second part, he said information on VAT rates can be found on different websites, but information is not always up to date and it is unclear which rate applies to which products or services. EU databases okay. is good for that, but not for EU, only for EU countries. So, um, Anita, maybe a few words from your side, given, uh, given the, 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 the time. Yeah on that because I believe you 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 have strived for a, a, a close to 100% accuracy on that one. Yeah, exactly because the the this is still still requires a lot of manual uh, work. Yeah, even if you have different sources, they are not uh, so the question is how accurate are, are they and how can you um, how can you ensure that the data is always up to date yeah? and you need you need manual steps in order to ensure that this information is also put into your systems. Um, and uh, we know that the European Commission, um, the database from the European Commission um, is, is not always kept up to date. Yeah, and it's, it's not, uh, it does not include uh, exemptions, local rules, um, specific uh, local regulations. So uh, it includes uh, VAT rates, but um, it's, it's not as, uh, uh, as extensive as our uh, uh, database is. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Anita. Um, Rosanna, is there any final question left? No, no more. Okay, okay. Well, uh, we're we're right on time. I would like to uh, thank uh, Anita and Kevin for their uh, very valuable contribution, and I hope to see all of you coming uh, uh, to our next event, which is in two weeks. Again, that will be with Visor Software, who also helps the tax authorities behind the mailbox to configure their data uh, architecture and data management. Uh, always uh, very well uh, to know what um, how, what happens behind the digital mailbox we talked about today. Um, enjoy your day and thanks again for attending our, our webinar series. This closes uh, the event. Thank you. Thanks everyone, thank you.